Hallo, ik ben Jan-Willem Bobbink en dit is SEO in 2023. Jan, wat is je number one SEO tip voor 2023? Het would be surprising, but I think um, I would mention internal link optimization as my number one focus. And it's it's not something new. Uh, it's not like a trend. Um, it may be completely different from what others are doing, but I think. Internal link optimization is still the most underutilized tactic in, in SEO. And I think the reason why it's underutilized is because it's difficult to measure. So there's, there's many smart people that have thought about building out specific models to determine the possible impact of, of changing internal linking, but there always have been issues. So it's not as straightforward as you think to really build out a model because it's not only the internal linking you need to take into account, but also the external linking uh, flowing in on different places of your website. So yeah, most of the SEO tactics nowadays talk about content. Uh, it's really easy to come up with a rule like, okay, every page needs to have 300 words or every page needs to have a sufficient core web vital scores. They need a certain amount of external links compared to the other pages. But yeah, internal link optimization is, is a bit more advanced and actually doing it can be a bit boring because you don't see the immediate impact of what you're doing. So even though it's difficult, I think 95% of the websites uh, can benefit a lot from just thinking about best practices. So you don't need any fancy models or uh, before or after comparisons because usually there's lots of low hanging fruit available for all domains. And it doesn't matter if you have a small web blog or a big uh, Amazon like web store, but everything in between, yeah, internal linking can be really powerful if done right. Well, let's have a little feel for how you go about doing it and hopefully leave the listener with um, a tip or two. So what's the best way of viewing your current internal link graph? Yeah, I think the, the first important thing to take into account is that Google looks differently to specific positions of links. So there's a difference between a link in a header or in a footer uh, compared to a link within a piece of content. Maybe for the listeners, it's, it's interesting to Google about patterns around the random server model. So that's a model written by uh, Google engineers and it discusses how some links within a web page have a higher probability to be clicked than others and based on those probability scores Google can generate a model and uh, assign a certain value to uh, specific links and based on that it makes much more sense that a link that's directly visible when a user uh, reads a piece of content for example uh, will be clicked much more than a link that's hidden at the bottom of a really long page in the footer. So considering that, it's, I think, important to see that difference first before you start analyzing anything. So yeah, once you understand that, uh, have a look at what, what pages are mainly linked from the main navigational elements. So check what's in the header, check what's in the footer, and check if those pages also have link from within the content. So most of the nowadays available crawlers like Screaming Frog, they do check in which part of the website uh, links are. So they will they will check for you if the link is in a header or in a footer, etc. So if you do a basic crawl with Screaming Frog, you already have that data available, but also manually looking at your page and see, okay, where are our main navigations? Uh, where are internal links within the content? Do we have any widgets that cross link, etc. So once you have that data available, combine it, for example, with your data from Search Analytics, uh, Search Console. Again, Screaming Frog has an easy connection with the API, so it's easy to ingest data and combine it with your uh, internal link data that you already collected. I want you to have that, yeah, really concrete tip, and I think one of the easiest wins to make is check for pages that are currently ranking position five to 20 and don't have any internal links or just a low amount of internal links compared to your overall link graph. So, if you can see that your top ranking pages have 10 links on average and your lower linking pages have only like four or five of those, um, you may want to move around the number of links and, and push more value towards the uh, least ranking pages. Another thing I, I like to look at as a quick initial win is to look to pages that have no links at all. So use a crawl source like the XML sitemap, which co usually contains all the URLs of your website and check if there's any link at all. Um, I've noticed, especially for bigger websites where 
some of the internal linking is automated. Like if you have a web shop that contains categories and subcategories filters, those link to products. Usually that is covered. But then marketers start to create specific landing pages targeting specific queries. And they totally forget about actually linking that page from within a useful spot. So yeah, that leaves a number of pages that have no links at all, but have actually a lot of SEO value due to other factors like the, co the content on the page or the relevancy to specific keywords. Another tip would be is to, especially if the domain has a top-down structure. So uh, as you can imagine, again, the web store, uh, usually it has a homepage that links to categories, the categories links to filters or subcategories and then to product pages. So you kind of create a deeper going structure, a kind of pyramid structure. But what's often missing, and that's also since Google needs to go through that structure from top to bottom uh, for every product page to be discovered. It would also make sense to have a look at, okay, how can I cross-link that lowest level within that pyramid? So how can I cross-link product pages? So think about adding widgets of, of most sold products or most discounted or widgets that generate useful links for users too, like uh, also sold or sold together with. And by doing that, you can get a much better coverage of Google finding out about all your product pages instead of having to go back to a category page, go through the pagination and then find all the products. Lots of practical advice there. I love your specific tip on um, identifying the pages that are ranking five to 20, seeing which of those pages don't have any internal links. And those are initial opportunities to increase rankings, obviously. So uh, a wonderful quick win opportunity there. However, you don't want to be linking to the wrong pages. So how do you determine a low or top performing page and whether a page is likely to be a, a, hot, a top performing page if you do build more internal links to it? Yeah, so it's, it's always important to balance it out. So indeed, removing a link to a top ranking page and point that value towards another page um, may also decrease the rankings of that currently top ranking page. So it's a balancing act. And let's say a page has 100 links and another one uh, only has two links. Yet yeah, it probably won't matter anything if you remove one link, bring it down to 99 internal links and the other two four links. But the page that has uh, gets a link added and in terms of percentages, get a much bigger increase of, of influx of uh, inflow of, of link value compared to the one that already had a hundred and only loses one. So it's like that one page will only lose 1%, but the other page will increase by 25% compared to the old situation. So you do want to balance it out. Um, what I usually try to do is like visualize it. So there's numerous uh, software tools available that actually uh, usually based on the old PageRank algorithms that can visualize the size and the impact of making internal link changes. So what you do, especially if you have a staging environment on your domain, uh, compare your link graph before and after the changes and then see what the actual uh, values of internal page rank values are uh, between the before and after uh, situation. And then you can also see, okay, uh, by doing these changes, we're taking a risk. And with risk, I mean, uh, maybe removing too much internal link flow from the top ranking pages. The other thing is these kinds of changes can be easily turned back. So in, indeed there, there may be a risk, but if it doesn't work and uh, rankings don't improve for both the pages that get more links and the page that already had lots of links. Uh, yeah, you want to keep the ranking stable. If that doesn't happen, yeah, you, you go back to the original situation. So it's not a one directional change you make. I think it's a constant change you do and also consider seasonality in this because maybe during the summer you want to link as if you sell fashion to bikinis and in the winter you want to link to jackets. So yeah, even throughout the year, you may want to balance it out. You don't obviously want every page to be indexed on a site. Some SEOs are quite aggressive about um, trying to ensure that pages aren't indexed. What are some examples and your general thoughts on uh, why we'd want to ensure that a page isn't indexed and how could you do that at scale? I would even also consider crawling. So first of all, you have the crawling part and then the indexing part. I would say for the average uh, website, 
the crawling part isn't really a problem. So Google spends enough time on your website to find all pages and then decides on the individual page level what to do with that page. But let's say you're on Amazon, Google can't update and, and crawl every page uh, every day. So they need to make a choice. So that's another one to consider is like, okay, uh, what if I have like, 5,000 new blocks every day posted on my content network. It would be wise to create widgets that basically guide Google to the latest uh, and freshest content. Same thing for the latest uploaded products. So you can help Google prioritize their crawling by adding or removing internal links. And which usually works best if you have a section of the website you don't want to be crawled and indexed. First of all, make sure that Google doesn't end up there. So hide the links. Uh, you can use JavaScript, for example, to have a link that's usable by, an, uh, by a real user, but it can't be by Googlebot because uh, you can make sure that Googlebot doesn't access the JavaScript, so they can't actually see the link behind the script. And that still works quite well. And then once Google is on the page, uh, either because we link at it, but yeah, even if the website itself doesn't link to it, a link externally could be placed to that same page. Then I would say, see if you want to canonicalize it or no index it. And yeah, that's a choice that really depends on the overall model of the, uh, the website. I would say, let's say if it's a product that is temporary, not available and no index would do because maybe the next time Google comes by and a product is available again, uh, the no index is, is gone. What you see with canonicals is that the whole value, but also the history of such an URL will be transferred from one to another page. And over time, Google also starts crawling the uh, URL that has the canonical on it, less a URL with a no index on it. So it depends a bit on what kind of page you're talking about to prevent indexing. But overall, I would say no index is the safest and canonical can be used if you're really sure that the page will never have any SEO value or purpose at all. So you've shared what SEO should be doing in 2023, but now let's talk about what SEO shouldn't be doing. So what's something that's seductive in terms of time, but ultimately counterproductive, something that SEOs shouldn't be doing in 2023? I would advise that 99% of the link building active, there's so much time and money spent on it and it doesn't deliver any value. So link building used to be really effective if done right, but Google has been coming, be yeah, they are quite effective in, in determining which links are there because of a genuine reason uh, and which links are being placed mainly due to the fact that SEOs think there should be links. So um, consider block networks where every individual blog post placed on such a domain contains external links. It's really easy for Google to detect that. Really aggressive linking is still taking place and usually only has a short term impact. I've seen clients spent thousands of dollars on, on buying links and then the impact was basically zero or at least the agency that sold the links made a nice story about be there being an impact but then there were so many other factors that also changed that it's really difficult to see or point it back to those individual links being placed and yeah i think the majority of the links currently placed with the idea of pushing seo rankings is, is useless uh, Google has so much data about what is a real link uh, and what is useful for the user. And again, we started this, this section with the random server model and the same principle can be applied to external links. So check if the, the domain where you're actually getting a link from is ranking itself. So is there any actual organic traffic going through that domain that can be referred to the link that you placed? And in most cases, the websites that actually offer the links um, don't rank at all anymore. So yeah, be really critical about what you're doing in terms of link building because there's still valuable links to be gotten, but yeah, the amount of crappy links that are being placed is, is much higher. Currently. I've just had a conversation with BB Raven and I'm sure she'd vigorously defend link building. But um, is, is it not fair to say, though, if you operate in a highly competitive industry, you've got um, perhaps even hundreds of competitors in your niche that you really need to be link building, quality link building? Yeah, you, you need you need to because on the end, uh, especially if the, the competition is fierce, 
uh, everybody is able to create quality content. So in-depth content or content that aligns with the, the user intention or the, the search intention that the user has within Google. The quality, technical quality websites are usually above average in, in competitive niches. So the only deciding factor is, is that's left is link building. So yeah, you have to, but yeah, we will agree. It's like, it's not about the numbers. It's more about the quality and the relevancy. So you really need to spend a decent amount of, of time and, and effort into actually getting those qual- high quality links. And it's not about the scale. And that's, that's what I see is going wrong. It's like people still see link building as something to do on the site. So they buy full packages or they close deals about getting 10 links a month for a specific amount of, of time for a specific amount of money. I never check if the, the links actually uh, sent through any referral traffic or, or have the right metrics, etc. Jan Willem Bobink is a freelance SEO consultant at notprovided.eu. Jan, thanks so much for being part of SEO in 2023. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed. Get your copy of SEO in 2023, the book, over at seoin2023.com. <laughs>